So we're going outside to shoot some footage for this little guy. This is a Mini T conversion. It's a hack fab chassis for, it's called the Omni chassis. And it's to convert your Mini B or Mini T off-road buggy or truck to an on-road car. It's pretty cool. So we, anyway, we're going outside to shoot some footage of this. And on our front porch, was this? Was this? Let's check it out. That is cool looking. I don't the 6x6 is just crazy. Especially in an old classic. You never see that. Bam. Bam. It's always interesting to me that the instruction manual is in the cardboard box over there on the ground and not inside the this box. So if you've seen any of the other FMS stuff, well we've only done the FCX. If you've seen our FCX video, um, you should check it out. It's over here. So it's very similar in packaging. Very cool box. Same remote. This little logo looks different. It is. It's silver. That's nice so you can identify the remote. It's different than the uh, the other one. Looks like we got a bumper here. Man, this is like cool looking. The detail is fantastic. I love hard bodies. Sucks that they're heavy, but they uh, they look so much better. So much better. I'm going to be a rear bumper. Rear bumper. Mm. Very cool. Maybe we'll remove the bed and do like a wooden bed or a flat bed. It might look better with a flat bed. This is kind of kind of goofy, I'll be honest. The 6x6 on this truck though is, is super cool looking. I just don't know if I'm a fan of this bed because obviously this would have had to have been fab. This was never manufactured like this back in the day. So yeah, but like a flat bed, for sure you'd have a flat bed. Maybe we'll just pull the bed off and just run rails. I don't know, make it a tow truck, who knows. Maybe we'll just leave it alone, I don't know. What else we got in here? Our charger, a little wrench, and that's it. That's all that comes in there. It's as simple as that. Now, how do we get this off? Wait, wait. Is it this? It is. Boom. That's where our battery hides. Nice. So you don't have to take the, take the top off at all. And mind you, this is pretty big compared to like a, a 24 scale, especially like a Kyosho 24. The Mini Z 124s are true 124s. The SCX 24s are much closer to 120th. And then the body of the FCX 24 is a, uh, it's a 118th body, but the wheelbase is 120th, really. Maybe 122nd. Either way, this guy's kind of big. We'll compare it. So there they are. Obviously the Bronco and the Gladiator, the FCX24, and this big guy. This is our biggest crawler we have, really. I mean, we've got 116th and 118th Mini Bs and Mini Ts, but we don't have any crawlers or trucks or anything like that that are bigger than this. This, is, this was our biggest, and so now this is our biggest. We're not going to ever go much bigger, I don't think. Maybe someday we'll get a 110th, someday, but it's just, we're just... We're not trying to do that. We're trying to stick stick with the minis. This is cool. Yep, I can fit the Orlando in the bed. What? <laughs> That's how much bigger it is. Good times. So you can see the ESC down in there. Speed control, ESC, receiver, combo. Here's what's in the manual if you want to pause and look at it. It shows you what all the channels are for. There's the transmitter. There's also this. We want to show this. This is the um, dip switches on your transmitter and what they do. It's just like the FCX24 and all the other FMS that have this uh, transmitter. Basically, it's your brake 
uh, settings, so just forward and reverse or forward reverse brake, then your LiPo settings, and then how you have your drag brake set up, 0%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. It's pretty standard for all the FMS stuff. It's also the light functioning. Again, you can pause on any of this if you want to see it. There's probably also a PDF out there somewhere. Looks like they have spare parts. And that's basically it. So we got a little chance to drive this guy. Let's put some footage here. Is it fun? Yeah. Watch where you're going. Here, go over to it and drive. Uh oh. Here, let's go this way. Okay, go. No, drive. Pull the trigger. Is the battery dead? Oh. Guess so. We'll have some more at the end. Uh, we just wanted to show you a little bit of a drive-in, and um, let's show you what the underneath looks like. So the 6x6 is a pass-through, and the drive shaft is like a kind of a captured drive shaft on this end. You can see it, that way it doesn't pull out. There's a little pin or rod going through, and then the uh, coupling right here is it's not fully open, so that keeps it from popping out. But it does limit the amount of articulation. You can see uh, if you were to try to you know, modify this and get a bunch of flex out of it, your axle is only going to move so far before it starts to pull on the other axle. This one actually already does a little bit. You can see just a little, not much, not a big deal though, but that's about the only way you can do that if you're going to have such short drive shafts on uh, something like this. The body and bed are screwed on, so you have to unscrew them. We'll probably pull the bed off here in a minute. And the body has to be completely unscrewed to pop off. Everything that you really need access to is under the hood. Um, but again, this isn't quite the same as the FCX24 platform. You know, I hope they do come out with this, you know, maybe not the 6x6, but you know, this. I think a lot of people like this body a lot. They just don't know about the 6x6. I think a lot of people just want this style body in a 4x4 and probably preferably in the FCX platform so that you can, you know, pop the, the whole body off and have access to your electronics because changing your electronics in this is not easy. You can't swap things around easily. It's not really meant to be opened up and worked on. Uh, you can, and we're going to here in a minute, just open it up and see what it's about, but it's not the same as like the FCX where you can just pull the top off and you have access to everything. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. Actually, let's just take that bed off first. I want to take that bed off. That's one of the things I'm not really the biggest fan of is this bed. Um, we'll have to do something with our lights if we're going to do it permanently, but let's just see what it looks like for now. Looks like it's just a Phillips head screw here. And a Phillips head screw on the other side. And then there's something on the back. These two guys here. four screws and she pops right off. Now again, we'd have to pull off all the lights and, and all that. We're not quite ready to make that commitment. Are these screwed in? Looks like the lights are screwed in. There's a screw right here. And we can just pull the lights off real quick. That'd be cool. And then we can mount them to the side. Oh, they, are, they do they do put kind of glue in here and glue them in just a little we'll just pop that off a little bit of glue right there you can see it on this one too I'm just kind of pull on it There's our two lights. Let's not lose our screws. Get them back in there. Maybe we can mount them just on the back here. I don't know. Do I like that? Do we like that? Maybe we'll build a a bed for it. I don't know. Right, that's the bed. Pretty simple. Let's see what under here looks like. Oh, 
These aren't. These aren't Phillips. I did find it kind of odd that everything was assembled except the rear bumper. Like, why wasn't the rear bumper just on the bed? Did they forget to add it? So they threw in the rear bumper extra because they forgot to have it installed. I don't know, kind of odd that everything was, it was ready to run 100% except there's a rear bumper to install. Like, why not the rear and the front? I don't know. I do think that sometimes manufacturers do stuff like that just so that you pull a screwdriver out. You know, you pull a tool out and, uh, let's see, how's this mount on the front? Looks like the two Phillips on the front. So then you pull a screwdriver out and you kind of work on it, you know, just to get that feeling. I feel like even on some of the uh, other brands, there's there's like stuff that they have set up and I'm like, why would you have it set up that way out of the box? We can easily just move this thing and adjust it. And I think it's because when they make it obvious like that, you you do it. And then that, then you're kind of involved, right? Like you're not just taking it out. It's not just like a Walmart toy. You just take it out, plug it in and go. You kind of, you tweak with it. You mess with it. You tune it. You adjust things. And when they give you easy things to adjust, if you're new to the hobby, it's just like, wow, I can I can do this. You know, this is something I can do. Oh man. Okay, so all the lights. Looks like there's a bunch of different. Interesting. Hold on. What's going on here? That's our servo. All right. This was glued to something, I guess. Not very well, because I barely even pulled this off and it came off, which is not a big deal. Oh, that's paint. I thought it was thought it was I thought it was cracked right here. I thought these were cracked. I'm like, what? They're cracked? The bumper? No, it's because it's paint. It's a blue bumper with white paint on it. You can see from our driving. Anyway, alright, let's see here. Here's our motor, a little transmission. Wonder how different that is from the uh, FCX. Let's look. Let's look. Let's get one right here. Bam. That's a big difference. The FCX has a much larger motor. Look at that. And obviously a much larger transmission. Being that this is such a big guy, it would have been nice to have this in here. Um, my guess is they had this already kind of in development in the works for a while. Um, and the FCX kind of maybe ran parallel or two different departments working on it. Maybe, hopefully, moving forward, even their 118th scale stuff will be using the FCX stuff. Unless they're trying to hit a certain price point, which maybe that's the case too, they want to keep the price on these low, um, then they're going to run this other stuff. But if they can upgrade these 18 scales to the same FCX24 transmission that's two-speed, I mean, that's awesome, right? They probably will raise the price though. We understand that. This wiring harness for the uh, lights is something else. Let's see, we've got our rear lights here, and then two sets, probably the headlights and the turn signal lights. Yeah, that's what's going on here. And it looks like we have an extra harness here to plug in if we wanted to plug in some more stiff so our antenna there's our battery what is this oh the power switch that goes to our power switch it is a small little transmission though let's see where's that is that an scx here's an scx transmission housing very very similar in size the scx 24 and the uh these 18 scale guys Very, very similar in size in that regard. Just a bigger chassis, obviously. I mean, you could, to be fair, you could probably take this chassis. Here's a here, here's a 24th scale. This is a legit 124 scale monster truck. And take the 18th scale chassis, which is really not that big, and do a 24th scale or even 20th scale body. You know, the, the body is huge, right? Looks huge. But the chassis rails are pretty thin. I mean, everything's... I, mean, I could 100% I could throw this on here. Obviously, the, the rear wouldn't work, but... I could. It's probably gladiator length here. Plus the 6x6. Six six. And I mean, here's the little brother, right? Wires. Too many wires. Get out of here, wires. Basically, I mean, hell, tires wouldn't even come out of the fenders. They're perfect. This body's perfect on here. Basically, like the Atlas, right? I mean, 
definitely could mount that on there, 100%. So I definitely think they could use FCX24 stuff in here um, if people were okay with the price points. What is, what is this from? Where did this, did this come out from over here? Oh, okay, that's from this. No, it's not. Get out of here. Too much stuff. So overall, it's a pretty cool truck. Uh, the wheels are not true bead locks, but they are. Uh, they do screw in from the back, so they do compress. So that's good. There's no foams in the tires. The um, wheels are plastic. There is second, uh, second shock adjustment points, which we're going to use. That'll uh, give you more flex or articulation. Move the shock forward just a little bit. Move it forward just a little bit. I'll probably pull these up just a little um, because with the bed, they do sit. It does sit kind of high. that's perfectly on looks like it's pretty close I think that's where it was sitting so it sits kind of high so if you move the shocks forward just a tad it'll bring it, tuck it in just a little bit probably that'll that'll look better um, even have them on the front here and well, that's nice that's more than the FCX has actually so it's, it's cool that you can have some shock adjustment points there so I want to go ahead and show you I move the shock from this position back one and from this position forward and this position forward and unfortunately the shocks actually hit on the other mounts so you can see I got no movement here because the shock is hitting that mounting position so I don't know the intent of these maybe they're for different models or if you replace the shocks you definitely have to put some spacers in there you can see there I have to put a lot of space in there to be able to get that to uh, go without hitting or you're gonna have to dremel that off because this is metal. It is a metal chassis. Um, but yeah, you can't even remotely tighten them down without the shock hitting on that other mount. So that's kind of boo. Um, that's about how long your screw is. Also, they're not ball joints. They're just like bushings. Just so you know. So not the most articulation on the shocks. But here, let's just see if we can throw this on here. We're not gonna leave it this way because you can't drive it this way. Um, but if you were to put some spacers in there and some longer screws, then you would probably be fine. You would just be out a little bit further. Let's go ahead and put this guy back on. The fronts are fine. The fronts seem to touch, but not really affect it. Uh, so we could do the front, I guess. So you can kind of see how tall it is with the shocks in those positions. And that just slightly lowers it just a little. But again, you would have to uh, you'd have to drum or dremel off that other mount or put some spacers in there with longer screws. Anyway, just figured I'd show you since we had it apart. Again, th this model is meant to be more scale looking, right? It's supposed to look good. And it does. It looks great. It looks fantastic. There's so much great detail on it. The chrome mirrors, the chrome here, the painted bumper. It's got real hinges on it. I mean, those are real hinges on the hood. You know, how cool is that? Just from a scale standpoint, this thing is awesome. It's licensed. You can't go wrong with licensed stuff. It just, you know, obviously it's going to make it cost a little more, but you get stuff that people recognize. Um, this is a real truck. You know, they made one back in the day, or somebody made one. I put a picture. And it looks pretty good from a scale standpoint. Again, we're just not big on the 118s, uh, but this guy is cool. We, we, we wanted to check this out. We hadn't had a 118th figure being new. We might as well get one. Um, the price point's pretty good on it. It's like under $160. Depends on where you are, I suppose. But yeah, I mean... But again, it's not the most capable crawler. It's a trail truck. It's it's for fun. It's a trailer rig, or you know, put a flatbed on it, or add a trailer and pull stuff around with it. It also has a full interior. I mean, it's got a full blown all the way seats and steering wheel and dash. It's kind of hard to see. Sorry, but it's in there. And uh, yeah, so again, it's all about the scale, right? Looks looks good. Also, doesn't seem to perform too bad. Got plenty of room if we wanted to add a brushless. Servo is, seems a little small. This looks like it's about the SCX 24 size. It's definitely not. Oh, maybe maybe it is Emax size. I don't know how tall it is. 
yeah, Emacs will fit in there just fine. So I guess it's a little bit bigger than the SCX24 servo. It's not as big as the uh, FCX. I don't know if you can really compare that. It's kind of hard to tell, but I don't think they're the same. You know what? So the servo is 23 millimeters and the FCX is 23. So they're the same size, they're the same size. 11, 11, yeah, they're the same size. It just looks smaller for some reason, maybe because it's chassis mounted versus axle mounted. It just looks bigger on the axle. Very, very similar in length. It is a little longer. We saw that with the bodies. Um, but everybody's stretching these guys out, so if you stretched it, the stretch, a lot of the stretch ones are going to be longer than this anyway. But again, it's all about trying to be proportionately scale to the body you're using. And that's why I say the FCX isn't really a 124th. It's much closer to a 118th or 120th at least, the body. And this is a pretty big body for a 118th. I think, uh, I mean, if we were to take measurements, my guess is this is going to be a little bigger than 118th body-wise. Now, wheelbase may be closer, um, but this body is pretty large, pretty wide. But again, those old trucks were wide. So we went ahead and relocated our tail lights to the chassis or the frame. So we can run without a bit, at least for now. Uh, you basically just pull that. There's a, a coarse thread screw that's in this because it's meant to go into the plastic of the, the, the bed. And you can pull out the chassis rail screw right here. It's a little bit bigger, but it'll go through there. You just have to be very careful not to move these wires too much because if you do, they will pop out. They break very easily. So we're going to resolder this. Um, as best as we can. So we're going to try to use a very fine tip soldering iron and uh, see if we can get that back on there and put it back in. Part of it was that the screw, they, you probably are best to pop the lights out of the casing, the housing, if you can do it without breaking off these little tiny tabs. Uh, pop the light out, the LED out. Just make sure when you're pulling off the glue and whatnot, you don't pull on the wires because that could break it too. And then once you pull the light out, then you can get the screw in and out a lot, lot easier. Uh, I was able to do it just fine on this one, and this one would have been fine, but we kept trying to reroute our wires, and in doing so, I just moved it too much. I was just back and forth trying to like get the wire to route how I wanted, and it just they broke off. So it had nothing to really do with the screw or anything like that. When we pulled the glue off, it had to do with me moving them too much. So just be aware if you do that, if you do mess with these LEDs, uh, they can break very easily. And I'd recommend it, if you have them in a final position where you know you want them, just cover them with some hot glue or some shoe glue or some E6000. Just a little bit to help prevent the wires from moving too much because you don't want this happening. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, make sure you pop them down in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and show you some more uh, running footage of us driving this little guy. Again, it's a good trailer, so...
Why don't you comment down below uh, any comments you have? Would you get one of these trucks? Let's go ahead and put six by six down in the comments. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are coming. And uh, yeah, get out there and run your cars.